Los Angeles. It's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Like It Show brought to you by BetOnSports.com. Play with the biggest, play on the best. It's BetOnSports.com, 888-996-BETS. It's 888-996-B-E-T-S. Or go to the website, BetOnSports.com. Go there right now, you moron. Do it. Do it. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. I, um, over the years, in various relationships, I have had women try to get me to give up various things. And you know what? At one time in my life, I was a pussy. And I allowed these things to happen. Example, I'll give the perfect example. One of my four ex-wives, didn't just dislike baseball. She disliked the sound of baseball. Like playing on the radio or on TV. She didn't even like hearing the sound of it. And I remember as I was heading uh, with my foot on the gas towards another disastrous relationship, I remember her coming into a room one time and asking me if I would turn the game off because it was giving her a headache. And that was my biggest mistake was saying yes to that, and I did. Ultimately, every time I turned on a game, she told me it gave her a headache. Radio, TV, in the car, taking a long drive. She could be sleeping in the passenger seat next to me, and I would have Vin Scully playing very low on the radio. Dodger game. I can't sleep with that on. Could you please turn that off? And I ultimately knew that I was a complete pussy at that time. We were living at a house with uh, our bedroom all the way in the back of the house. All in the back. And she was sitting in the living room watching a movie or something, and that was in the front of the house, and my bedroom, or our bedroom, was in the back of the house. And I remember I went, told her I wasn't that interested in the movie, and I walked to the back of the house, closed the bedroom door, and very quietly turned on ESPN to watch the uh, ESPN uh, baseball game. And pretty soon that was followed by pounding on the door. Are you watching baseball in there? Are you watching a game? Uh, yeah. And knocking and complaining about the game. And and that was pretty much the beginning of the end. I knew that this couldn't last. <laughs> and pretty soon it was over. But not before I had pushed out and allowed this to happen. I have had chicks who uh, have tried to give, uh, get me to give up all kinds of things. But now, there are certain things in my life. Now, they, your life and my life, you know, we have things in common, and I'm sure there are things about us that are different. But there are certain things that women have tried to take away from me, and now I just say no. I don't need them every day. I don't uh, enjoy them every day, but I enjoy them. And they're part of who I am. And uh, many of you boys, I know, are complete pusses, and um, you don't know how to say no. So I'm going to tell you about myself, and then you can tell me about you, okay? Here are the things women try to get me to give up that are just part of who I am. Okay. Hockey. I don't play it. I'm not going to get hurt. I just like to watch. 
I've got the satellite dish. I've got every game telecast in North America available to me. Now, I don't watch them all. I don't watch most of them. But you know what? On Saturday when I'm sitting home and it's the fall or the winter, Saturday the first game comes in from the East Coast at about 10 a.m. on the West Coast. Usually it's from someplace like Long Island or Boston or Philadelphia. And I will watch that game. And then, you know, because hockey games are pretty much around three hours in length, and because the time zone difference is three hours, essentially every three hours there's another game. So at 10 there's a game uh, on Long Island or in Boston at 1. There'll be a game, which will be 4 on the East Coast. The 1 o'clock game will probably be a West Coast game, day game, like San Jose. Anaheim, Phoenix, sometimes L.A., but I'm usually at the game in L.A. Four o'clock, there'll be a game. It'll be uh, seven o'clock East Coast time. That'll be a starting time there. So uh, sure enough, when the one o'clock game is over, uh, at four o'clock, it might be a game from Toronto or Montreal or New York. And then at seven, all the nighttime West Coast games come on. And those games could also be from San Jose or Phoenix. And I might have the games on all day, and I might not even be watching them. They're just on in the background. They're kind of there. I would say the vast majority of women I've known over the last uh, three, four years have complained about this. And uh, I've told every one of them the same thing. You either learn to live with this, or we can't be together. That's it. You, you can't get me to give that up. This is something I'm never giving up. Never. Okay, here's another one. Hanging out with my boys, please. I've been with uh, at least one person who didn't like the boys and wanted me to give them up. Told me that uh, she didn't like them. And they were a bad influence, or they were bad, or she just didn't like them. There were various reasons. Um, the boys are still here. Uh, she's gone. <laughs> uh, jazz. Now, jazz is an acquired taste. Jazz is not the most popular form of music in the United States. very popular in Japan and Europe. But in the United States, it's a small, select crowd that likes jazz, and I'm in that crowd. Now, I don't listen to it all day long or even every day. Well, you know what? On Sunday morning when I'm having some brew and reading the paper, I like jazz. I, you know, as much as I like Lincoln Park, I don't like Lincoln Park at 8 o'clock Sunday morning. Okay? 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, whatever time I get up. So, um, I'm listening to jazz. And there are women who actually complain. I was with one woman who said to me, um, that stuff gives me a headache. Jazz. You know, I've never heard of anybody saying jazz gives you a headache. I've heard of people saying it's bland, it's boring, it sounds like the dentist's office or something. I've never heard anybody say the stuff gives me a headache. You know what? I said, this is part of who I am. You take it or leave it. I'm not going to stop listening. Not going to do it. And, of course, and I think all my boys out there have been through this, uh, and my boys here, my boys uh, listening, um, have been through this one. Uh, any level of boozing, that is always an easy target for women. They just get really pissed off by the fact that you're boozing. Now, the fact is, chicks love boozing when they first meet you. I can't tell you how many women I've uh, polluted their minds and destroyed them, essentially. They say, I don't really drink much. And then I get them to the Absolute, and I get them to the Jägermeister, and then I get them to the tequila and everything. I get them all, you know, they go through the whole list. And they start off, oh, no, I don't drink much. And eventually, uh, woo hoo hoo they're crazy, right? But then if the relationship goes on, eventually women start, like, for some reason, they don't like having any fun anymore. Like, fun is something you do when you're not having a serious relationship. And once the relationship becomes very serious, suddenly you're not supposed to be boozing anymore. Well, suddenly they stop boozing, and then they sit there sober while you're boozing. And they say things like, like I've done on the air, I've done this bit on the air, you know, it's the same thing. You're nothing but a drunk. You're a lush. You're boozing all the time. Boozing, drinking, boozing, drinking. Now, by the way, I'm not always boozing. 
I have a wine cellar. That's not exactly boozy. You know how much wine you have to drink to get soused? A lot. If you're drinking the good stuff. And if you're drinking the good stuff, you don't just glug it down, you know, like you're drinking another Powerade. I mean, you drink it slow. You sip it. You drink it slowly. Maybe not you, Dean, but most of us. You drink it slowly. Are you going to be drinking again? Are you going to be drinking? You first you start drinking, and then you start acting like an a-hole. And then you hang out with your friends, and you act like a... If you had, you've had that conversation, right? And some guys say, all right, I'll stop. And then they, like, they, they go undercover drinking. I was at work. I was at work. I, I'm just at work a little late. That's all. But they'll never admit to being drunk anymore because the chick will threaten to leave or start nagging or screaming or something. So you either go underground with it or you, you know. I don't know. What do you do? You go underground with it. Or you, or I guess you stop. I guess that's the other thing you do. Some of you boys, a lot of you boys knuckle under. You know what I'm saying? If you're with a chick who you think is hot or you think you're really lucky, that's the bottom line. Many of you boys, and I, as I say, I've, I've confessed. I copped. We've all been there. We've all been with somebody and said, okay, and given stuff up. We've all done that. And you could very well be with somebody right now who's pushing you to give up the stuff you love. I don't care what it is. It could be anything. Maybe you like uh, riding in a rodeo on the weekend. Maybe you like playing uh, the, the, the uh, rugby on the weekend. Maybe you like jumping from a bungee cord. I don't know what it is. But you know what? It's always the same deal. When they met you, this was all cool. You were cool. It was all cool. Everything was wonderful. And then once they become serious, very serious about you, suddenly all the things they loved about you, you're now supposed to stop doing. Okay? I want to find out from you what things she is making you stop doing and whether or not you're going to listen to her. John Likas, 1-800-5800-866. You're the first guy to touch my dad. You reattached him. Oh, good. I, I thought I'd gotten a little too drunk one night. The John Likas Show. Likas on Hot Talk 1080 KO. Here we go. Yep. The Tom Likas Show. A 1-800-5800-TOM. It's a telephone number. Jadine, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it hanging? Uh, hanging right, J.D. Good, 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 good. A um, little message for all the gals out there. I'm 32, married an Englishman. He's 51 now. Started drinking with him, all his English, Irish, South African, New Zealand buddies. Kind of was a pain in the butt at first and thought, you know, I really like this guy and maybe I could just get him that way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. You've got to let him go and do what they got to do. I was there, the drinking buddy with them, and, and great with all the guys and everything. And then finally, I just had to buck up and just say, I can't keep up. But I didn't have the right to make him stop doing what he was going to do. I agree totally with what you're saying. I feel sorry for the guys out there that have to give up what they want to give up, because in the end, it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, women, as I always say, women love you know, TV shows like This Old House or Trading Spaces. Antiques Roadshow. Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. No, they like shows where you make somebody over. That's what they like. Oh, that you put, yeah. And so yeah. what they do is they will take a guy who uses drugs or who's a heavy boozer or who likes to watch sports on TV all day long, yep. likes to drop his socks on the floor or whatever, yep. and uh, they will take him, uh, figuring that later on they can nag or harass him or cajole him into stopping doing what he's doing. No, but they're not going to change, are they? No. Of course not. And, and those who do are miserable and will eventually leave like I did when I did that. Because it's the same thing with us chicks. And that's what I tell the guys. You have to say, this is part of who I am. Take it or leave it. Right. You were attracted to something about them in the first place. You know what I had to say about jazz? I had to say, yeah, jazz is going to be on. I'm not hiding in another room to play jazz and sit by myself. Exactly. It will be on. And there exactly. is nothing you can do about it. And if you're just insecure that they're going out and you, you're thinking that they're doing this, that, and the other, then you don't want to be with them in the first place. Right. But it, it is true. You, girls, just let them go. Do what they're going to do. Have faith in them. Trust them. 
because inevitably they're just going to come back to you. You, That's you right. can't, you cannot change, you cannot change a man. If you whatsoever. don't like jazz, or you don't like guys who have friends, or you don't like guys who like to booze, you don't like guys who watch sports, don't go out with guys like that. Exactly. This. I think what they do is they, they think that they're going to hook them in, just like you said, hang out with them, the, the girl that you were with, and, and of course they do. I did the same thing. I thought I can drink them under the table. Oh, I couldn't. After three beers, I was gone. But they started at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and they were getting lock-ins at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I just could not keep up. Mm -hmm. So I had a choice to make. Do I want to be with this guy, or do I want to do I want to just forget it? So I just said, no, I, I, I want to be with him, but I had to admit I could not do it. But you, so, uh, but you stayed with him, and uh, you absolutely. didn't give him a hard time about being a boozer. Absolutely not. We've been married eight years. And but then again, I knew going into this marriage with him being English, that's what they do. He even went back to England and lived for a year, and I couldn't kiss and moan about it. That's what they do. Look, they if he's if house. he's English and he takes a shower on a regular basis and puts a toothbrush in his mouth, <laughs> you're ahead of the game. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Tom, so much. I agree 100 percent with what you're saying. And girls, get a grip. Jadine, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Dan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up, brother? Just the ratings, Dan. Thank you. Hey, uh, uh, chicks, I want you to give up something. Met this girl. Love me for my Harley, brother. Guess what? Get together for a while. Now she wants me to give up the Harley. Oh, Jesus. Told her, told her, you know what? You're done. You're out. It's You're dangerous. Yeah, you told her to get lost. Yeah, what man would give up his Harley? Hey, and check this out. Here's the kicker. Dude, when she left, when I got rid of her, she kept the spare helmet because she's going to get the next Harley. Oh, I bet that's true, too. Do you love her or what? <laughs> give me old school, Tom. Here you go, Dan. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Michelle. How you doing? Great. Here's the thing. I, I do agree with you. However, i got to say, it's all about a give and take. And I have taken some things away from my husband, but then again, I've given him some things that he's never experienced before. So I think that he... What have you taken away from him? I take him away. I give him a little bit of heat about his drinking every once in a while. Well, he was always a drinker. He was always a drinker. So yeah. why do you give him heat about it? That's who he was when you met him. Because I'm worried about his health. But he's not worried about it. Of course he's not. He's a man. A lot of men don't worry about their oh, health. All right, but the bottom line is when you met him, it was okay with you. You're right. So. You're right. I'm fully admitting to that. But as we've gotten older, I've gotten a little more wary of of early death and, and things that are more realistic, and you don't think you're going to live forever. And so, you know, something like that, it might be a concern. Uh-huh. Okay. What besides, else? Besides, besides, the beer gut is not a good thing. Well, again, obviously, you had no problem with it when you met him. Well, it's because he didn't have one when I met him. Ah, so he's getting fat. <laughs> he's getting a beer so gut. So you told him he's getting fat. But, it's again, it's all about the give and take. I, I've taken away some other things like, Maybe golf here and there when I need him at home or something like that. You don't yeah. need him at home. Come on. need him at can home. I, can I just explain to you what he's gotten? I got ten seconds. Go. He's gotten... I fully introduced him to pornography, which has added wonders to our sex lives. Well, that's a good thing if you're into it. Certainly. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas. Oh. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Just sitting here thinking. I, I've had a great career, but I do have certain regrets. I could have had more Slim Jims. And I've been giving that a lot of thought lately. I don't know why. This comes to my head. Something I should have done. Damn. One of my regrets in life. Don't let that happen to you. That, and I never had sex with a man. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Just, just going over some of the things I never did. <clears throat> um, we're, talking about <laughs> we're talking about the issues. Uh, the things that you do. That uh, she had no problem with until she got in there with you, and then she started telling you, you have to stop doing them. 
you don't want to stop. Or maybe you did. Let's say hi here to Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Eric. Tom, what's going on? Uh, it's doing a radio show here, pal. All right on. Hey, I've got to tell you this. I was with a uh, girlfriend for uh, six years. I was a big old puss. You know, after after five years, I decided, you know what, I'm going to move in with her, see how things go. Well, then that's when everything changed. You know, she was just, she turned into Jessica Simpson, the revenge. She was just all about not letting me see my family. She didn't want me to watch TV. I mean, I'd be on the computer, and when you were saying about the uh, knocking on the wall, that's what she would do. She'd yell at me in the room. Hey, Are you on the computer again? Are you playing on the computer? Exactly. I love that one, by the way. Are you playing on the computer? I've gotten yeah. that one. Are you playing yeah. on the computer? Yeah, so I was like, you know what, man? And he got to the point where I would come home from work, and, I mean, I would get a ride from my – she had my car. I was like a total puss. She would have my car, and she wouldn't want anyone else to take me home. If it was because, is there a girl taking you home? Is there a girl taking you home? I'll oh, forget it. I'll come pick you up. It was just ridiculous. So I left the bitch. I said, get it. <laughs> I packed my stuff up, and I, you know, I didn't even tell her nothing. I just got all my stuff together. I called my brother. Hey, come pick all my stuff up. Yeah. I was out there. Well, I was out of there in one day. I, mean, I, was just, I was just gone. And she had all kind of bills. You know, she put it in like an idiot. She put everything on her credit cards. So I said, all right, fine. You go ahead and do that. I, had, you know, I, I left there with no bills, a clean slate. Now I work at a great place. I work at Hooters. I run around a bunch of hot women all the time. Yeah. Hey, man. i you know, I my life is better now. I mean, I've I have had so many girlfriends since her now. I don't even play with girls. You know what I mean? And I, you know, it's weird because. I wasn't even listening to you when I was with her, and I was already just, I was already emulating all your stuff even before I started listening to you. And once I listened to you, I was like, oh my God, this guy is the man. He is it. So I'm just going to tell you, Tom, I listen to you every day. You're it, and that's why I tell you thank because you give me the willpower to keep going every single day. Thank you, Eric. All right. Appreciate the call. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. This is Carrie on the Tell Like a Show. Hello. 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 Um,. Okay, I want to, my boyfriend and I have been together for four years, and when I met him, I knew that he um, smoked pot, and I never got on him. I was like, I chose not to do it, and I'm like. I'm going to tell you why you chose not to do it, because you wanted to have a relationship with him, and so you chose not to say anything, because he might say, get lost, you bitch, and so. Oh, exactly. And so you just uh, laid low Mm -hmm. until you felt like your relationship was on solid ground. Yeah, and, I, you know, it's his choice. That's fine. He can do what he wants to do. But now, hello. Hello. Um, okay, I want to, my boyfriend and I have been together for four years, and when I met him, I knew that he um, smoked pot, and I never got on him. I was like, I chose not to do it, and I'm, I'm like. I'm going to tell you why you chose not to do it, because you wanted to have a relationship with him, and so you chose not to say anything, because he might say, get lost, you bitch, and so. Oh, exactly. And so you just uh, laid low mm-hmm. until you felt like your relationship was on solid ground. Yeah, and, I, you know, it's his choice. That's fine. He can do what he wants to do. But now um, I'm going to be applying to be to the police academy, and that's something that I just can't have around me. And then you know what you have to do. Well, I uh, so is it too much for me to ask him yes. not to do it? Yes, it is. Okay. Because he'll just do it behind your back. Well, By the way, I, I can I tell you something. Uh, yeah. in, in my past, I had a woman that I dated uh-huh. uh, who I really liked a lot who uh, got herself a gig with a federal agency. Not the police, but a police-like federal agency. Yeah. And she came to me and told me that, that I couldn't have pot in my house anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, you know where she is now? I don't know. Not here. <laughs> That's where she is. Yeah. All right. You're right. Remember, you met him as a pot smoker. He did not meet you as a cop. That's true. So, <laughs> All right. you either live with his pot smoking. I know. Or you break up with it. Yeah. But trying to get him to stop, here's what I would do if I were smoking pot and you told me to stop. Uh-huh. I'd smoke it anyway. I'd just do it when you're not around. But that's what I told him. I said, I'd rather you tell me you did quit and do it behind my back with me knowing nothing. But come on. Even, even that. You've been around a pot smoker. Your hair smells like pot. Your clothes smell like pot. There's roach uh, clips and roaches themselves lying around. There's bongs around the house. There's, uh, 
Come on, there's little film canisters. There's zip, little Ziploc bags, like no, the size nobody uses except pot smokers. Yeah. Come on. You're yeah. going to know. Yeah. You're, you're going to know. Yeah. You hooked up with a pot smoker. Yeah. Well, you can't be a cop and hook up with a pot smoker. I know. So you either have to decide to do something else for a living, mm-hmm. or you have to break up with it. Yeah. Which is it going to be? I I don't know like he's well we listen to your program and he started his own company and you know we listen to what you have to say and mm-hmm. stuff and um he said that he wants me to be the housewife and him to make all the money and that's fine with me but right now he's just starting and we're not seeing huge income coming in right. so well you could be something other than a cop though especially if you're not planning on doing it as a career. Well, that's true, but, like, right now... By the like, way, I, I don't know if it's LAPD or whatever, but do the taxpayers a favor. If you're not planning on doing it for life, don't waste our money training to be a cop and then quitting in three years. Don't do it. Go work well, at I, go work at Ralph's for $20 an hour. <laughs> it's a union gig. Yeah. I, well, I figured I'd do it for longer, but then he's got this whole mindset that we're going to... Uh, he's going to take care of me. Here and again, I don't need to work. you pick this guy. And I, I bet there's 20 other things about him you don't approve of. No, not really. Like, pretty much everything, we get along and work out and compromise and, you know. Yeah, but the, the, the point is that there are certain yeah. things that define a person. Yeah. And some of them might be addictions. or Some of the, some of the things might be uh, really distasteful or illegal. Yeah. But when you accept a person, you accept them for who they are. Exactly. And you uh, you are, don't want to do that. You want to, you, like most women, think you can nag him or harass him. Into stopping doing something that you signed off on when you started going out with him. Yeah. Well, I tried not to, and then just recently when I started thinking about the whole police thing, that's when I started to get on him. Right. Well, but again, yeah. <laughs> he, he was a pot smoker before you thought of going into the police department. Yeah. So oh, that's your I, deal. You can I, always break yeah. up with him if it's that yeah. important to become a cop. Well, I just not become a cop. There you go. Or you can break up with him and become a cop. Well, then you I could write down his address and go arrest him later on after you. Yeah. Him. <laughs> I could. You could do that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll think about it. All right. Well, you give that some thought. John Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. John Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I just wanted to call and tell you how much of a schmuck I think you are. You're the king of the schmucks, but. I think it's great. I'm a schmuck, too. I'm it's the most awesome. entertaining schmuck in radio. It's the Tom Likas Show. Like it on Hot Talk 1080. Tom, this is Lori on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 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 Hi. Is Hi. This, are, am I talking to the right person? Lori Burkhardt in Newport Beach, California. Who did you want to talk to? I want to talk to you, Tom. You sure it's me? Yes, I want to talk to you. How are you? Do you care, Lori? I do care. I'm doing great. Good. I'm doing okay. So the situation about the girls trying to change.